Hey guys, welcome to the channel, back to DJing, and welcome to my review of the Chauvet Freedom H1. Let's get right into it. So the main question I'd like to answer for you guys today is, are these suitable for a starter DJ? Or should you go with regular up lights instead? As you can see, they come four in a case. And I picked up three cases. I paid about $650 to $750 for each case. Because I didn't buy them all at the same time. I bought them one at a time off Amazon. Checked out the first one, decided I liked it. I actually tried to get four cases, but the fourth case came from out of the country. And with COVID, the shipping didn't happen. So as you can see, what's included in the case is four Chauvet Freedom H1s. One charger with the cables needed already attached to it one IRC remote IEC power cable and a quick start guide as you can see the case is well built they slide in there nice and easy very well protected it's not a hard case it's hard on the sides but not on the top or bottom but it doesn't need to be it's thick enough foam very rigid and just to point out when you're charging, make sure you do not charge with the lid closed. Okay, and I'm also gonna try to touch on some details that other videos may have left out. So hang in there till the end. When I talk about the how-tos, I'll do a rundown of how to use the functions on the back of the unit and the IRC remote, and how to kind of get the most out of these units. And we'll talk about whether I think they're suitable for a starter DJ setup. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the specs of the Freedom H1. First of all, they're six, eight, or 12 channel DMX programmable, but only Wi-Fi. There's nowhere to plug into them to be able to plug a cable in. So you have to use DiFi or FlareCon. And each fixture comes with a RGBAW slash UV 10 watt bulb with a 50,000 hour life expectancy. An adjustable M12 mount with magnetic base. So you can stick it to a drop ceiling or a lighting truss or whatever you like you can light tables with it lots of options we'll talk more about that later they have a 21 degree beam angle and 25 hertz strobe and about an 8 to 20 hour runtime depending on whether you use one color or all colors one color obviously will run for hopefully around 20 hours my experience is that they're pretty good they run pretty close to that i don't know if they'll quite make that but i use them for live streaming already quite a bit and they work really well just on white they last for a long time i don't even bother turn them off i usually just put them on blackout and they'll go for like a week or so sitting on blackout um with me turning them on for live streaming and like i never let them die they go probably way more than a week but yeah definitely a good run time and they have a seven hour charge they work pretty well standalone with just the remote and the features that are included each one has a magnetic plate that you remove to be able to remove and replace the diffuser gel, which will increase your beam angle or take it out to narrow it if you're going to pin spot a cake or something like that. Uh, they all have a digital display on the back. Battery meter, four bars equals full power, three bars equals 75% and so on. Two bars equals 50%. You get the idea. And they have the normal DMX controls menu enter up and down so pretty typical controls pretty easy to figure out especially if you have a quick read of the owner's manual but we'll get into a little bit of that anyways because there's a few things i've seen people ask on other videos that weren't quite answered and i'm going to try to do that for you so hang in there till the end and we'll get to that okay and now we're going to talk about the run modes they can run in standalone master slave or dmx as i mentioned earlier uh, sound active and we'll talk a bit more about sound active later how to set it up I'm going to show you both on the remote and on the back how to use sound active and I'm going to show you how to set them up in banks so that you can run one set one bank and another set on another bank so you can have them alternating colors and that kind of thing makes it a little bit more interesting for your shows if you're not using DMX uh, they all have auto fade strobe pre-programmed colors custom color mixing i'll talk more about that show you how to do it uh, both on the back and on the remote 
and UV, and I'll show you how to use the UV on the remote, which is a question I've seen on a couple of other videos. All right, so that's the features and the specs, and let's get right into some of the uses. So first of all, let's talk about this magnet on the bottom here with the M12 mount. Really, I haven't used the M12 mount yet because this magnet has been so useful. Um, pretty much every situation that I've used these in so far, which hasn't been a whole lot with COVID, but I have used them a few times in venues and situations and at home for my live streams. And this magnet is amazing. You can hang it from drop ceilings to light cakes or tables. You can hang it from a lighting truss, which is what I do for lighting my live streams. And yeah, adjustable, very strong magnet, works really well. Lots of situations you can be used for. It's strong enough that I trust it on the truss. Um, technically, you should probably put a, a safety tether on it just to be safe. But really, if you wanted to be that safe, you could just use the magnet along with the M12 mount if you want to put it on a truss. And I don't think that's ever going to go anywhere. They come with a Kensington lock. So if you do use them as up lights, you might want to lock them down. They're pretty small. They would be easy to grab. Um, hopefully, most people won't do that. But I've heard of it happening with full size up lights. So. Probably have to be careful of that. Um, table lighting, I could see these being used at outdoor venues. You could use them on a truss to light a dance floor or outdoor tables when you don't have power. So that's a good option to be able to offer your clients. I've used them as general outdoor lighting. If I need to work on something outside and it was pushing in the dark, I've set them up on the stand just to use as general lighting. Um, I use them for my live streams to light the green screen and to light myself. So as you can see, they've got a lot of uses. They're pretty versatile. One thing I didn't mention is they could be used as down lighting uh, from drop ceilings or if you have anything else that's magnetic. But kind of the burning question I think most people want to know when they're looking at these is can they be used as up lighting and should they purchase them over full size up lighting for the price, especially as a starter DJ. So I'm just going to roll some B-roll here and show you how they do as up lights. And as you can see, I think they're pretty good. If you compare it to an ADJ Mega Tri Par Profile Plus, as you can see, it's pretty decent. They're not quite as bright, but that used to be kind of pretty much the standard before battery up lights would be something like this plug-in light. And these are almost as bright. So definitely, I think they can be used as an up light. Um, they're not gonna be as bright as the full size, safe Freedom Par Hex 4, but if you need the extra brightness, you could always double them up. For the price, you could get, say if you're looking at four Freedom Par 4s, you could get 16 of these Freedom H1s, which gives you a whole lot more versatility. You could use eight of them as up lights. You could use all 16 of them as up lights, but doubled up, so it's like having eight and that would help get you the extra brightness that you might need in certain occasions. Or you could just use half of them as up lights and half of them as dance floor washes. You can set them on different banks so that each set does a different thing. So you could have some running as a static up light while having others on automatic washing a dance floor. And I'll show you how to do that in the how to in a few minutes. So bottom line, yes, I think these can be used definitely as an up light. I think they're bright enough for most situations, maybe not all situations, um, but definitely as a starter DJ, well worth it for the money. And a little bonus on top of that is if you do decide to upgrade to the full size Freedom Par 4s later on, these are still going to be very useful. You're still going to be able to sell them as an accent light and use them as an up light if you want as well in combination with the full size up lights, or you could use them as down lights in combination with the full size lights or you could use them as wash lighting as I, as I mentioned already, cake lighting. It just gives you so much flexibility. And that's why I think these are a great option as a starter DJ for both up lighting and accent lighting of all kinds. So with that being said, let's move on to the how to. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the how to section of this video. Uh, we're gonna take a look at how to use a couple of the features on the back of the unit itself. And then we're gonna have a look at how to do some of the things on the remote. Basically, it's all the exact same features, 
you can do pretty much everything with the remote which i find easier uh that you can do on the back of the unit except for things like switching the dmx channel and that kind of thing so that kind of thing you will have to do on the back of the unit but as far as sound sensitivity and auto modes and sound mode and color mixing and, uh, and stuff like that you can do all that right on the infrared remote but we'll get into that in a few minutes right after we have a look at the back of the unit here so when you first look at the back of the unit you can see the display has the battery level indicator i'm going to turn the brightness down here on my lights so you can see that a little bit better so you can see the battery level indicator four bars means full battery life three bars means 75 percent 50 percent 25 percent and they have pretty much the standard dmx button layout on the back menu enter up and down so pretty standard programming but we'll get into it here anyways so let's have a look at the menu settings here if you hit menu that goes to six channel eight channel or 12 channel mode and then from there if you hit enter that will let you pick which dmx channel you would actually like the fixture to be on keep in mind this only works with wireless so you will need a di-fi or flare con unit to control it if you continue to hit the menu button we come to the preset colors so you can pick whichever color you like as you can see on the wall behind me and those are preset mixes and then hitting the menu button again we come to our program modes so you can choose between different types of programs some fade and some flash now we're going to leave that on the flash for a minute so I can show you the next setting is speed. So now you can slow down the flash. Let's go a little quicker. So you can slow down the flash or fade or whatever mode you have it in. So if you have it in just a fade mode or automatic mode, you can speed or slow that up or down. Hit the menu button again and we come to sound active mode and now it's always good to hit enter to kind of lock it in. And now when I tap it, you can see it changes colors. And if we hit the menu button again, that comes to our sound sensitivity, S-E-N-S, enter. Oh, sorry, S-E-N-S, and we can just turn it up or down. So turn it down. My recommendation with sound active stuff is to have it as low as you can while still responding to the beat and to have some variation between the different devices if you have more than one thing on sound active you want some things to react to less sound than others that way you get a little bit of variation between what your stuff does but i'm going to make a video about that later so make sure you hit the subscribe and hit that bell so you can see upcoming content i'm going to do a video on how to adjust sound active lighting to get the most out of it so stay tuned for that so sound sensitivity and notice i didn't hit enter so it didn't stay there you have to actually hit enter to lock it in okay and then next we have infrared control turns the infrared on and off i believe that's for the remote i'm not sure how to get to actually change on and off as you can see if you hit menu it goes to the next one if you hit enter it goes to color <laughs> i'm not quite sure why so that's one thing i'm not quite sure about how that infrared mode works maybe it means the infrared light I'm not sure that's the one thing i don't know next after infrared is dimmer so you can turn your dimmer up and down which will make whatever mode you're running in run dimmer or brighter okay so that's how you program it from the back of the unit let's move on to the remote so we've learned how to set up the unit from the back one thing i want to touch on that is when you set the master slave which is transmit and receive so basically you set one unit to transmit and you set its channel that you want to transmit on. So STR, enter, DR for receive, DR2 for channel two, enter. Or if you want to change it to transmit up and down. So transmit, enter, channel two. That's what this one's. This one's actually a receiver. I use this one as a receiver. So I'm gonna put it back to receive, enter, channel two, enter. So basically you put one unit on transmit, you select its bank, in this case it's bank two. Then you put the rest of the units on receiver, 
bank two, then the transmitter unit will control the rest of those units in that bank. Now, having said that, let's move into how to with the remote. Let's give you a close up look of it. And as you can see, it has blackout, auto, sound, strobe, speed, sensitivity, percent, I'll explain that, manual, fade, and then colors, plus and minus sign. So we'll get on to that in just a second. So I'm gonna set this unit where it won't be in our eyes or your eyes, but it'll shine on the wall there. So this one's the transmitter. All of these ones are the receivers on the same channel. So we're just gonna point them all at that wall so we can see what it's doing. So if I hit blackout at the transmitter, it blacks them all out, turn it back on, and they are in sound active. So whatever I do to the first one, changes all of them. Now, if I want to change the sensitivity, I hit sensitivity and then plus or minus. So I'm hitting minus. I'm gonna bring the sensitivity down because it's reacting really easily to my voice. I put it about 15 and let's give that a try. Okay, so it's still reacting, but not quite so much to my voice, a little bit still. We can put that down a little bit more. Nine, there we go. So now it takes quite a bit for it to react to my voice. Voice, 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 voice. Okay, so that's the sensitivity. We also have auto mode. So there's auto fade kind of. And then if you hit up and down, it changes the auto mode. So there's a bit of a flashing one. And now while it's on auto mode, if we hit speed, see the display changes on the back to S100, then we can turn the speed down. Little hint though, if you want to turn it down lots, just go the other way and it'll go back to zero and then you can turn it up from there. So yeah, that's how you adjust the speed of auto or fade. The feature is basically layer. So if it's on auto, you can adjust the brightness and the speed on top of that. Next we have sound, which it was on already to start. Sound active. But again, we can adjust the sensitivity and we can adjust the brightness. So if we hit percent and then we can sound and percent and we can change the brightness. It doesn't show on the back of the unit, but you can see it's changing the brightness, but it's still on sound active. Okay. And then we can hit fade and that puts on a fade mode. And again, we can hit percent and adjust the brightness and we can hit speed and adjust the speed of the fade. If we go down past zero, then it'll jump up to 100%. Okay, and then we got manual. Now this is where we're gonna answer some questions because I've seen some people ask how you get these to do UV with just the remote. And here's how you do it. You use manual mode, and then each of these colors controls one color on the light. So you hit red, and as you can see, red's at zero. If I hit down, it'll go up to full red. Or if I hit up, it'll count up for the amount of red that you want. So basically to get, say, UV, you turn the red down to zero, turn the green to zero, and then turn the blue to zero, which it is, amber to zero. Too far. There we go. White to zero and then UV to full. So there we have UV on all of the fixtures. Hit red and add a little of that to get hot pink with the UV and there you go. That's how you get UV, that's how you get color mixing or whatever specific color you want. And then lower on the remote, we have our preset colors in this area. So if you just wanna quickly pick a color that's close to what the venue is, simple colors, red or yellow, orange, yellow, blue, darker blue, green, and so on. So that's a quick way to choose a quick color if that's all you wanna do. And that brings us to the end of our how-to on our remote control. So in conclusion, pros for a single LED, they're bright, they're quite bright. 
Um, they can be used as up lights, yes. I would give them a three out of five on that because they aren't as bright as full size up lights, but they are super versatile. So if you're looking for fixtures for your starter setup and you're debating whether you should spend the money on full size up lights, or if you're looking at these and thinking, will these work as an up light? Yes, they will work as an up light just fine. And then once you have them, they'll have a lot of uses. They're very versatile. And then when you upgrade to full size up lights, they're still gonna be usable with them as down lights, cake lights, table lights, dance floor, flood, all kinds of stuff. So definitely very versatile, high quality, metal construction except for the hood, that's plastic. But other than that, they're metal construction. The adjustment works well. The magnet is strong, can hang off pretty much anything. Magnetic, it'll hold its weight quite easily. You do have to watch sideways because that sheer force isn't as strong, but hanging or anything like that, very strong. And most cases, even sideways will work as well. Um, quality, I give it a four out of five for quality. There is a couple connection issues. Out of 12 units, all the units connect, but I have two that don't connect quite as well, they don't reach quite as far. So every once in a while you have a couple that aren't doing what the rest of the lights are doing. Is it a deal breaker? I don't know, that's kind of up to you. But from what I've seen, many models have that problem, like the larger up lights from both Chauvet and ADJ. There's always seems to be one or two that aren't quite in sync with the rest. So it's not like they're worse than any of the others. So I don't know if I can really count that against them too much. It's obviously just a wireless thing. It's just like anything wireless. Sometimes they're not perfect. So quality four out of five, uh, they're durable, tough. I've had them at skating events and they've been kicked and stuff like that and they're holding up good so far. I haven't had them very long and I am just getting started. So time will tell for that, but from what I can tell, the quality is good. Uh, upgradability, definitely good fixtures to get if you plan on still upgrading to larger up lights because they'll still be useful with them. And cost effectiveness, if I were to spend the same amount of money on full size up lights that I did for these three cases of Freedom H1s, I would only be able to get three full size up lights. So what am I gonna do with three full size up lights? Um, yeah, they're brighter, but what can I do with them? I can, I can light two pillars and have one left over for maybe a facade or something. So for the money, definitely as a starter DJ, I think this is the better way to go. That's why I went this way because I would way rather have 12 of these for the approximately $2,100 versus three full size up lights for approximately $2,100. That's here in Canada. These lights cost me $650 to $750 per kit. And from what I can tell, the Chauvet Freedom Par Hex up lights are also about $650 to $700 each. And uh, now that's comparable because four bulbs four versus four bulbs, but these are so much more versatile. I'd rather have those bulbs broken up into separate individual units that I can do with what I need to. I can hang them, I can put them together if I really need the extra light, put them side by side, and then I've got the extra light that I need. But for most starter DJs and the smaller venues I might be doing to start, I don't think you're gonna need the full size up lights. And when you compare them to say a, an American DJ Tri-Profile Plus, they're almost as bright. So, and that used to be kind of a little bit of an industry standard. So yeah, they will work as up lights, um, cons, uh, the couple of them have the poor connectivity. They work still, but once in a while, they glitch a little bit. They're not as bright as the full size up lights. And I guess maybe they're small enough that they're probably easy to steal, but they do come with a Kensington lock slot. So if you're really worried about it, you can lock them up if you have somewhere to lock them to. But yeah, as far as cons, that's about all I got. So definitely a worthwhile product for a starter DJ in my opinion. And that concludes my review of the Chauvet Freedom H1. If you found any of this useful or entertaining in any way whatsoever, please hit that like and subscribe. And if you want to see future episodes, make sure you hit that bell. I have a video coming up about how to adjust sound active lighting and get the most out of it as a starter DJ. If you don't feel like you're ready to go DMX yet, I'm going to show you how to set up your sound active lighting to get the best effect. So watch out for that. Hit the bell. Talk to you later.